checking in, News Nation national security contributor Tracy Walder and former CIA officer and FBI special agent, along with trial attorney and legal analyst Brian Claypool. To you both, thank you. Um, to be those families right now and to see Brian Koberger walk into the courtroom uh, has to be just an ov overwhelming flow of emotions. Brian, let me start with you. How do you as an attorney prepare families for this moment that they face the person accused in the brutal murders of someone they loved so much? Yeah, hey, Marnie, great to be with you. What I would tell uh, family members would be that attending the arraignment and then attending the trial, likely there's going to be a trial, is, is part of the therapeutic process of working through the PTSD. I mean, these family members have endured trauma beyond comprehension, right? Their daughter's murdered. And, and, and that's the way I would explain it to them, that, that by facing this head on, by walking into a courtroom and looking Koberger in the eye will eventually help them process their feelings, process their, their grief, process their anger, and hopefully get them to a better place in life where they can ac actually manage their daily life and then maybe find a bigger purpose in life to carry on the legacy of their kids. Mm. The pursuit of justice. Tracy, the evidence will be revealed. We already know some of the evidence that prosecutors plan to present to a jury given the affidavit, and it is going to be hard for these families. Of the evidence that has been shared publicly, what do you think is the most compelling for the prosecution as they build their case? So thank you for having me, Marnie. For me, the most compelling piece of evidence really has always been the vehicle. Um, I will be interested to know what comes out um, should this go to trial uh, regarding the vehicle, what forensic evidence was found in there. Obviously, we know there's digital evidence um, from the vehicle, but I would be interested to know in terms of biologics and what else was recovered from the vehicle. I think that will probably be the most compelling thing um, in this case, particularly if if there are victims, blood, hair, those kinds of things um, within the vehicle, because that would put Brian Koberger there at the scene of the crime while the crime was taking place. And DNA is indisputable. Brian, weigh in on this, the knife sheath that was found at the location of the crimes. I mean, how will that play into it and how will the defense strategize around something like that? Yeah, exactly, Marnie. The ninth, ninth sheaf, as as it stands now, is the most powerful piece of evidence because it, it arguably has Koberger's DNA on it. And and the only way that Koberger has any chance of explaining that is his defense team is going to have to hire some kind of forensic expert to analyze how that knife, knife sheath was tested, Marnie. Was the testing accurate? Was it acceptable? DNA testing, were there any flaws at all in the testing of that sheath? And also possibly argue that maybe the DNA had been planted on the sheath. And that, that's a hard argument, but that's about it. That, that, that's all they really have to work with. And, and to Tracy's point though as well, I, I think Marnie, uh, prosecutors made a, 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 a great, or did a great job of, of having a grand jury indictment instead of a preliminary hearing. Why? Because of what Tracy's talking about. There's probably there's probably some really powerful evidence in the truck, possibly in his apartment, possibly blood stains that we don't yet know about, right? And had there have been a preliminary hearing, then defense lawyers for Koberger get a preview of all that. They then have to find they get to find out what all that evidence is to try to go after it and attack it. Now they don't get that sneak preview of all the potential DNA evidence that the prosecutor has. We were just told that court has adjourned, waiting on details of whether or not he entered a plea of guilty or not guilty. Uh, to the evidence, the witness statements in this uh, case will be critical, Tracy, and that was left out of any preliminary hearing, right? So the victims did not have to face him once again. Um, how important will that step be? So it's a big, it depends with that. I, I completely agree that it, this is yet another reason why I believe they went towards the grand jury indictment and not a preliminary hearing because they didn't want to subject um, these witnesses to the defense and to examination by defense. I think witness testimony here, we have to remember this was late at night. Um, there could have been alcohol and drugs that sort of played, came into play here. And so I, I think witness testimony will be important 
important. I'm certainly not saying that it's not. Um, however, you know, as a former FBI agent, I'm always looking at things like forensics, right? I think that is really the thing that tips a case one way or another. Yes, the, absolutely the witness testimony is 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 relatively important, but I do fear that the defense will absolutely. Um... Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.